and I'm fully like ready to explode and then uh excuse me captain we're having a thruster error. We have had a serious malfunction, and it looks like your mission of interdimensional travel is going to be postponed indefinitely. So then I got really frustrated, and I threw, I think all that was left, I think it was what? Maybe around 100 milligrams. Hello, welcome back to Sight Substance. In today's episode, I am going to be sharing with you guys an absolutely crazy tale. I mean, what else is new? Basically, after I filmed the video about why I will never smoke DMT again, well, then that whole debacle of my family leaving took place and all bets were off. I heard the calling during one of my drug-induced rampages when I wasn't living at home anymore before I realized it was time to get completely clean. Anyway, during that whole process, there was a whole lot of compounds that were used, one of them being a massive monster dose of DMT, which resulted in some very unusual concerning results, which is what we're going to dive into today. Now, I must preface this video by saying I absolutely don't recommend that anybody does anything that I talk about in my stories. I'm referencing to a time where I was in a very dark place, meaning this behavior is not indicative of who I am. This, this is like Adam trying to escape his feelings before Adam started to undergo some very intensive therapy. I really want to make it clear that I do not recommend anybody does anything as crazy as I'm talking about right now. This video is designed for entertainment and safety. Safety in the sense, learn from my stupidity and don't make the same gosh darn mistakes yourself. So if you're looking for some deep meaning here, look elsewhere. Yeah. Anyway, let's dive right into this shit show. So basically what happened was I heard the calling during one of my nights when I was, I was on mescaline light dose of mescaline mixed with 3MC and I heard the calling that I was recruited to revisit DMT land and I was like wow I thought I was done with this place <laughs> I felt like I had to go because I was having so many nitrous fueled evenings and mixing it with acid and all this stuff I was like getting my brain primed for having a full liftoff shoot me to Mars mission but Unfortunately or fortunately, I could not find the DMT. I searched everywhere for it, and I was like, I guess it's a sign that I'm not going to visit it. So fast forward to a week later, I randomly was at another location because I was moving around a lot, and I stumbled upon the DMT. And that evening, I was having a ketamine experience. Jesus Christ, so many goddamn things. Not any crazy dose by any means, a pretty light dose, but keep in mind that I would have also had Kratom that day. The ketamine, I guess, was wearing off. And I decided it was time to DMT lift off. But of course, before embarking on my journey, I had to have some nitrous balloons. It's so hard telling this story because like, I feel like the person I'm describing is so far from who I've metamorphosized into. I feel like I'm telling the story of a different human altogether. To me now, this sounds so reckless and insane, but at the time when you're in it, it's like you're rationalizing like, oh, I only had a little bit of ketamine. I don't even enjoy it. It's worn off. And now you're like, what am I supposed to do with my evening? I feel like if I could sit down this version of Adam with me right now, I would just smile at him and nod and say, you have to go through this man. So anyway, anyway, I'm digressing into all these areas because this story is really hard to tell. I'm trying to be straightforward, but I can't without like stopping every few steps and being like, holy shit, what the hell was I thinking? Anyway, this is a fantastic story of where you don't want to end up. So I get the DMT. I decide that I'm going to get my feet wet first. I load up about 20 milligrams into it, which with this DMT in the past, I've broken through on 20 milligrams. So I put the 20 milligrams in. I start off with the balloon. I'm getting strong balloon effects. And then, of course, we got the DMT. I light her up, inhale, hold my breath, exhale, light up, get the rest of that goddamn foul smoke in me, exhale, waiting to see what happened. The interesting thing about being in this, like, really low state is a lot of the fears that I usually had were completely void. They just melted away off me. Like I was a goddamn ice cream cone in the desert. It's a metaphor for my happiness was the ice cream. So all my happiness was gone and I was just this bare empty cone. My metaphors in this video are so bad, which is exactly why I'm leaving them in because they're so bad it's almost funny. <laughs> so when you are the ice cream cone, a lot of the fears that you might have about blasting off and not wanting to get possessed by demonic DMT entities from praying mantis land, well, all those fears aren't present because 
at least I'm speaking for myself personally, because in a sense, you're like, I'm already so low. I really don't care what happens. It's a weird space to be in because it's kind of freeing in a way. I remember I just felt this serene sense of calm wash over me. And I'm just like sitting there floating. Mega Zen. Keep in mind, 20 milligrams of this batch in the past has blown me through a portal that transported me out of this dimensional sphere that we call reality. Not this time, just really calm and chill. Hmm, that's interesting. DMT, the tolerance works a little differently than other psychedelics. I think it is there, but it fades so fast. So I think I gave it about 10 minutes and then I was like, well, in those 10 minutes, actually, I would have gone through a couple balloons. Thing was you do the DMT when you come to, like if you do go unconscious, then you do the balloons because the balloons piggyback the DMT and it gives you this really crazy, I'm a drug addict, abuser experience. <laughs> so, 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 I would have done a bunch of balloons, if I'm thinking correctly, and then I would have chilled, and then I was like, yeah, I want to go deeper. So then I loaded up another 50 milligrams now. We upped that dose. This was way more than enough to blast me off, and I was fully anticipating to be shot out of a cannon, melted and shh, <sighs> took a deep breath, brought it to my lips, inhaled the demonic smoke, exhaled quickly, inhaled, got all of that sucker in me, and I'm now strapping myself in mentally and preparing to just get the reality that I call home torn from my clutches. I remember hearing the buzzing. It starts to pick up. You start to hear this... As Terrence McKenna says, and then the crumpling of a paper bag or a plastic wrapper. It's intensifying. My eyes get heavy. I close my eyes. They just go shut. And I start seeing these red, greens. Mathematical geometry starts to fly through the back of my eyelids. You get this, this thing where like these, these swirls of shapes and colors. It starts going really fast. Visuals that you're seeing, they change really fast. Geometry in my head is going and I'm fully like, like ready to explode. And then nothing. It was like this massive buildup and then the visuals went, and then it just silence, dead air. Like I was back, I opened my eyes and I was like, okay. That was weird. Usually at this point, I'm face to face with an alien and he's telling me that I'm in a simulation, but not this time. I'm still in the simulation. I haven't left it. What on earth is happening? Okay, I know what I need. The answer to all of my problems, more nitrous balloons. <laughs> So then I would have inhaled a bunch more nitrous balloons, grasping at straws, trying to see if it will help me get to this breakthrough point at this time I'm chasing the breakthrough. It's fascinating to me that like when you're, when you want something and you're going for it with these psychedelics, like you want the ego death, the ego death's like, oh man, no, you can't have me. Versus like when you're terrified and you're like, I don't want the ego death. I don't want the ego death. I don't want it. It's all of a sudden, oh, you don't want me, huh? And then it's like, <laughs> it's, it's hugging you. It's got you in a headlock and you're like, oh, I got the ego death. <laughs> <laughs> what you resist persists. What you chase will run is true for even these psychedelic states sometimes. Crazy shit, man. So I'm chasing after this experience that I used to be terrified of. And I'm, I was actually getting pissed off because the balloons aren't working. The DMT is not working. Even the nitrous wasn't knocking me unconscious. Like, I don't know if my ego was just mega swall, if this is some effect of being super depressed, of being on their hormone therapy, of being on this mix of things, the kratom, I don't know. But I could not blast off. So then I got really frustrated and I threw, I think all that was left, I think it was what? Man, maybe around 100 milligrams. There's no reason why 100 milligrams of DMT is not going to shatter you into a million pieces. Like if 50 didn't work, then we're going for 100. We're, we're, we're... <laughs> the big guns are coming out. So we loaded up that 100 milligrams into the pipe, melted it in. I wasn't even nervous at this point. I was more angry. I was like, why am I not blasting off? Again, just keep inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. I cleared the whole thing. The ringing starts. I'm like, okay, this is it. Now it's going to happen for sure. I know it. So I close my eyes. I'm prepared to launch. Uh, excuse me, Captain. 
we're having a thruster error. Yeah, in section C block eight of the uh, rear thrusters, we have had a serious malfunction and it looks like your mission of interdimensional travel is going to be postponed indefinitely. And I was grounded. Nothing happened. Could be tolerance. Maybe at this point I was in, in encountering some form of tolerance, but I feel from my past experiences, even if this was a bit of tolerance, something should have happened. Like. I think I got like some slight visuals, but nothing fucking happened. At this point, I just accepted defeat. I was like, I don't know what's going on. Well, clearly I wasn't invited. That's what it felt like. It felt like in order to break through, you have to find Willy Wonka's golden ticket. And since I didn't have the golden ticket, the Oompa Loompas weren't letting me into the castle. On a chemical level, it doesn't make any sense. If you ingest enough of a chemical compound, you should receive the the desired psychoactive effect but in this instance i believe psychedelics are very unpredictable in their nature and as i experienced firsthand perhaps it was some interaction with the other chemicals perhaps it was actually just the state of mind i was in because i was not privileged the breakthrough and i've seen other people firsthand try to break through on pretty big doses and never get a breakthrough a lot of people won't agree with this because they would say no man well if 100 didn't work then i'm sure a thousand would have blasted you off and like maybe you're right maybe Maybe you just need to take more, I, I don't know, but I really on some level feel like if you're not energetically in the right space, you will not be allowed entrance, access denied, and that is what I experienced here, which is crazy because in the past, I have had breakthroughs on like 20, 25 milligrams, like really tiny doses. So to be denied entry after these monster doses was just crazy to me. It makes these psychedelics even more fascinating to me because other drugs like Adderall or even alcohol, you know, or weed, the effects are usually pretty predictable. Like you can know going in what's going to happen, but then you have these psychedelics where not only is each trip so variable in its design, but whether or not you're even going to have an intense experience isn't necessarily dependent on the dose you take. It's dependent on all these other factors like set and setting your mentality. Um, these experiences continue to astound me. Yeah, and that's my story. Why on earth did I have the urge to share this story? I don't know. What I hear when I tell this story, what I feel is just a sense of shame, embarrassment, and sadness for um, the person that I became where I was able to rationalize using things in such a self-destructive way and convince myself that it was okay and safe. Like, it's no wonder that I was under such a cloud. I never gave myself enough time to recover and just feel, I was always in a chemically induced state. And it's really sad looking back to see that I let myself get to that point. Um, obviously I, I would wanna say like, I would never get to that point again. And, and that's how I confidently feel. But it's like, I can understand the other side of that coin where you're like, well, you've said that before and, and you still somehow did. Um, this is where I think the therapy was great because now I don't feel the need to use anything, which is incredible. And I can hear my kids calling me because I'm down in this basement telling this brutal, horrible, embarrassing story. And I somehow Dad! was able to come back. I am blessed. My mom cut my hair. What? <laughs> How does it look now? It looks beautiful. You look fantastic. Because all of that hair was in my eye. Can I see? Yeah. Look at that gorgeous hair. What? That's, a, that's just m medium hair. Can I put this in a bag and keep it in my pocket? <laughs> <laughs> I will catch, cast witchcraft on you. You guys have interrupted my video. Yes, lovely. <laughs> Good job. Well, look at how, feel how light it is now. It's very nice. We took lots of the bulk off. Oh, you like. I, we found the case. I really thinned it. Well. Yeah, you thinned it out. Cool. Because it was so heavy. Did you get the pink case for the iPhone? <laughs> she did. Oh, good. Naomi had it. Did you see Kane's haircut? Kane, come here. Let me see that gorgeous hair. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. How's the potty training going? Perfect. Yeah, mommy got an alley. And look at oh no, what happened? Look at Kane, you said. <laughs> oh, you cut look yourself. At Kane, you Whoa, said. look at the difference in the color. Yeah. Kane's oh, is slowly Kane. turning more dark. All right, guys, let's come upstairs. I love Bye, you. Dad. Bye. Bye, Dad. We'll see you at bedtime. Bye. 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 Bye.
I love you, Kane. Bye. Anyway, that wraps up this story. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And <laughs> yeah, this was actually a hard one to tell. I thought this was going to be fun to share, but I started talking and I'm like, this is so embarrassing. Anyway, if you enjoyed this story, make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel uh, for more content like this. And yeah. <laughs> At least I'm good now, I guess. Shit, man. All right.